Starlink? Starlink, yeah. That's Sasquatch what we need, 1000 <laughs> internet. <laughs> Pedagrande Wi-Fi. <laughs> Pedagrande Wi-Fi. See, look at you. You froze up already for a second. Oh, my uh, God. No, no bueno. I'm on Wi-Fi, too, so I, I, hopefully this goes well for me, too. I, I, oh. I'm on a combo between Wi-Fi and plugged into the wall in my condo, whatever they did. I had the I had a technician come in and just make sure all the Wi-Fi was uh, the inter- Ethernet was active. But every yeah. once in a while, it just drops out. So I have no idea. Yeah. But fortunately, my place is small enough that it doesn't matter. So. Huh. Usually I hardwire back into my um, my modem, but I was running late. So I just ran in here, jumped on. Cool, man. No problem, man. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Sorry, I'm late. No, oh, that's all good. No problem. Usually I'd be the one who's late. So this is this is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we are now this is like the ninth episode now we're shooting? yeah it's number nine yep sort number of nine. hi-fi number nine nuevo and yes <laughs> and nove 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 nuevo is it? Uh, yeah well it's italian it's nove in spanish in spanish it's a uh, nuevo no nuevo is new um oh <laughs> i only know up to ocho because of like ocho. Oh, is, is it cinco yeah. No, Cinco is five. Neuf is nine in French, but that doesn't help. This is uh, riveting, riveting <laughs> stuff. This, this is. <laughs> Turn us off in the first 10 seconds. Riveting content from Indeed. the secrets of the Pedro Grande. <laughs> Dude, yeah, first off, are you using a, a totally different camera for your feed? That looks awesome. Like, it's just my flatter. camera I use for the videos. I'm using oh. it as a webcam. Cool. Oh, is that is that the little DGI... DGI uh, uh, no, baby, this is thing? a Sony. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's almost like I do this for a living. Yeah, it's crazy. This is yeah. like this, we're dealing with professionals here. This is a couple of amateurs dealing with a complete professional. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, God. Well, first of all, uh, Randy, also known as AKA the Cheap Audio Man, thank you so much for joining us on well, Sort of High Five, man. My friend. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's our pleasure, sir. It's our pleasure. Um, yeah, and for. You know, those of us who don't know, Randy and I have kind of met a few times in a number of uh, um, shows, and then also traveling to Italy with the uh, with with Steve Jan and his folks from uh, Fidelity Imports, and uh, that was a that was a, a heck of an adventure. The best trip ever, man. That was very very cool. That was very yeah. very cool. I saw tap- uh, I saw Marco Carlo consume his weight and seafood one night. <laughs> Oh my god, this is very impressive. Yeah, yeah, seafood and tiramisu, if I remember. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Yeah, tiramisu. <laughs> How did you guys not have the runs after? Like, just like Carlo told me, it was like five plates of tiramisu. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, I don't have any debilitating gastrointestinal issues. But um, just like the cream alone, like just. And, like, and I'm Italian, so that that just comes with the that just comes with the uh, the nationality. <laughs> so. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's just my poor indian constitution where it's just like if i if i hit if i go hard in the paint like over a few days it's like i need a day off <laughs> yeah oh man uh. Ter- terrific stuff here marco <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> we try we try yeah. um man so randy uh Tell us Come a little on. bit. Again, this is going to be the, I guess, the, the basic, the probably the most basic question is like, how did you get, how did you get to where you are now? I mean, where did this all, how did this all start, and where, and how did you get to where you are now, sir? They're Russian server farms, and what you do mm-hmm. is you pay them, and then they just watch your videos over and over again. Mm, box. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Actually, I'm coming up on my fourth anniversary. It's uh, two days. Wow. Will be the fourth year but i am i've always been into hi-fi and home theater from you know from like young age so i had Mm -hmm. a a two-channel system when i was i think 11 or 12 with separate components so i was always been just like some people like you know when you see a motorcycle if Mm -hmm. you're into motorcycles and you don't know why but you just like love it Mm -hmm. and you see stuff and so i was the same way with speakers i don't know why i just saw speakers i'm like god that's so cool and Mm. so i don't know where it came from but i had an obsession about it and uh did you just put that together yourself or did was it like uh like you did you get it from like put together from like you know money you save from part-time jobs or whatever or is it something my little system yeah yeah um 
Yeah, I just, so I grew up on a farm and I was, you know, made money here and there, but I got a CD player or I was getting a CD player for Christmas and it was a used realistic receiver was my first Uh. receiver. And I got it from a furniture store because back then, like every furniture store had a little stereo section, Mm -hmm. Um, even in tiny, you know, tiny towns. So they had a used realistic receiver that was I think $80 at the time. And I looked mm-hmm. at it so many times I'd been back there that finally the guy just like took pity on me. And like, <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but he ended up giving me a deal on it because I just looked at it so many times. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I got a pair of Kenwood's uh, speakers, like mm-hmm. floor standers um, oh, nice. with a passive radiator, which was super cool. And then an Emerson say. CD player. But oh, man. yeah. Uh, and then uh, fast forward and I was at work one time and some one of the, my coworkers made the mistake of asking me about headphones or something. And I just like started, you know, vomiting all over him. <laughs> and he said, and he was in his late twenties and he said, dude, you need to have a YouTube channel. And I was like, okay. So I bought a, I bought a whole, a whole bunch of, so uh, my, this is a long story, but my no, parents uh, moved to Arizona. So they had this big, stuff uh you know container full of my old stuff which was all my old toys so Mm gi joe star wars and i was very fastidious about them so i had all of their their original you know accessories so all their weapons all Mm -hmm. their outfits and everything and i was going to sell it on ebay i just sell it for like 100 bucks or whatever i'm like no i'm going to put one of these up one at a time just see how much they bring well you know people that that are my age apparently have money now and are are obsessed about their childhood. And so (laughs) they bought these things. Like some of these figures went for over a hundred bucks a piece. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I had this money set aside and I was watching YouTube and I was like, I'm going to get some high end stuff. I finally got enough money. I think I, I I had like three or $4,000. I'm like, I'm going to get the high end system. And now I'm going to know what everyone's, you know, talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I bought a pair of Kef LS fifties used mm-hmm. and then a mm-hmm. pair of moon by sim audio or a pair of uh, moon by sim audio integrated amplifier nice. which used too, which yeah, is yeah. expensive stuff so i think that whole system came in around four thousand or forty five hundred dollars retail and mm-hmm. i turned it on and i was like that's it like <laughs> this is what everyone's been going on and on about i'm like yeah. i've got a six hundred dollar morantz you know home theater receiver that sounds better it didn't sound better but it sounded almost as good better to or or something you know more appealing to you yeah and i had some elac's um the elac debut reference on hand too so then i got mad and i'm Mm. like i'm gonna listen to these and compare them and then it was at that point where a switch kind of went off in my head i'm like oh okay this is gonna be my first video because Uh, uh, because it it took me off really that i saved all this money and it was more than underwhelming mm. to say the least. So that's when I started and I, I figured if I was going to try to do this, I was going to do it right, which was put out a whole bunch of videos. And if people watch, people watch, if they don't, then I probably shouldn't be doing this. And luckily <laughs> for me, people end up watching. So, I mean, that's the, I mean, very long and short of it. Cool. But yeah. Oh man. So have you just permanently like ditched the metas or? Uh, yeah, I sold those shortly, shortly yeah. thereafter. Because at that time, like, because I knew I wanted to do this, or mm-hmm. the the goal was to do YouTube full time, and so I obviously didn't have a relationship with any manufacturers and or retailers, so nobody was sending me anything. So everything I did a video on, you know, I had to own. So, you know, right. having I can't remember what I paid for those LS fifties. I think it was. I think they retail for twelve hundred, so maybe I, I think I paid like seven or eight hundred dollars for them. So I sold those and then took that money and bought more stuff and then listened to that and then sold that stuff and bought more stuff and then mm. you know, eventually, you know, when the channel got some traction, people started reaching out to me and I reached out to a few companies and mm-hmm. Emotiva was actually the first company that ever sent me anything. Nice. To do a video on and um yeah. So here we That's are. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. It's been awesome. I mean, I can't, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet to be able to do this for a living. And you branched out too. I mean, you think you want, do you have a, like a watch channel? Is that I have right a watch or? channel. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm probably going to be starting another channel sometime. I keep saying it, but I haven't yet. I have ideas, but mm-hmm. uh, 
having the time and discipline right. is something that I'm <laughs> still trying to find. What's the next yeah. one? Was it cars or chopsticks? What is it? Yeah, chopsticks. So I'm going to, it's a <laughs> chopsticks, chopstick channel. Yeah, chopstickenthusiast.com. I've already got the URL. Um, you just basically yeah. steal them from every restaurant you go to to see who has the best. <laughs> yeah, right, and then we're going to have some, you know, uh, I review the custom made ones. So we have uh, um, Teak and then Himalayan Swine Bark. Is <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna try that and refurbish sure that, katanas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I don't know. I don't exactly know. I've got some ideas about the next channel, but I don't know exactly what it's gonna be yet. Will it be somewhat spoil. like tech related, or just no? Like, it's just... gonna be something completely different. It's gonna be like um, something to do with dads and wisdom fatherhood what it looks like when you're 40 versus 20 versus 50 and uh, you know just like what what i wish i knew when i was 30 to be a father or the mistakes i've made or, or things like that so something along those lines I, I want it to be real positive and kind of tell stories about you know the mistakes that dads have made and, and what they've done different, what they would do differently if they went back, what mm. they've learned from other fathers and, you know, just kind of some, some old dude wisdom, maybe a few dad jokes in there. Here and there. Would, it, would it be prefaced with cheap or no? is that just like not a I thing know, at the all? Cheap father. Yeah. The, the cheap dad. <laughs> the incredibly unsuccessful father. <laughs> um, something along those lines. Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man! But I I still haven't shot a video for it, but um, I've got some ideas. That would be pretty. That'd be pretty cool too, and then just just a nice a nice sort of different kind of different kind of thing. Put positivity out there, man! Like yeah, you know, and just having fun. Dads learning from other dads, or young kids learning, or whatever it is, because there's a lot of wisdom. You know, you live mm -hmm. you live a few years, you figure out what works and what doesn't work, and I just think they're. I think it'd be fun to have a platform to be able to share stories and then learn from, you know, other guys that have had experience. Cause if we talk, you know, we're three guys, right. But if mm -hmm. I talk to a hundred different, different dads, you know, that's a ton of experience. Mm. Or, or a ton of mistakes. <laughs> that's, well, I, that, that's where you yeah. get experience from, right? No, exactly. Mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Well, that's cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be neat to, I hope that, uh, that comes on, uh, comes up and gets going sooner rather than later that'd be that'd yeah. be cool yeah i've oh. got a 2020 what is it 2025 is i've got some plans whether or not i can execute on them is still nice. yet to be determined are you going to capital i'm not i'm gonna actually i'm actually gonna be in a press junket in japan actually oh, happening. of course you are <laughs> <laughs> what of what yeah, I know. I, I, I'm We're not talking about it. I've already Apparently, I was brief. left off. I was left off the invite list for that one. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, I'm already catching enough grief from taps on that or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's I'm my gonna, favorite place in the world, man. I love that place so much. I've never been, so this is gonna this is gonna be like this is like a bucket list thing. So it's gonna be interesting. We're gonna be that's really cool. I'd love to go to Japan. Gonna be visiting Stacks. The headphone guy Stacks is is, is sponsoring it, so I'm gonna be visiting them and then. I'll be stopping in. I figured while I was there, I, I asked a couple. I asked TAD and TAC if uh, I could visit just for the heck of it, and they said, "Oh, sure, come on." And since you're going to be in town, and because they're all in the Tokyo area, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be dropping in on TAD and TAC, and then and then finishing up with stacks. So nice. it'll be uh, it'll if be you're fun. not intoxicated nightly, I'd be really disappointed in you. Well, <laughs> I'll, be post I'll be posting stuff on Facebook, so you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll find we'll find out what happens. <laughs> but uh, but one of our other guys, Craig Chase, he's gonna he's gonna be at uh, at Capitol. So so yeah, he'll he'll be there. I'm actually I'll have him because you're you're obviously gonna be there, right? Yeah, I, I'm gonna probably book my travel today. Oh, very yeah. cool. Does anything special happen there? Or is it just another audio show? It's just a, I mean, I think it's one of the better audio shows in the mm -hmm. U.S. So I mean, after Expona, I think that's kind of the next one that I really enjoy. And I, I hang out with my, uh, some of my patrons and some of the other viewers. So it's kind of like a meetup. Mm -hmm. I do a meetup in Expona and I do a meetup at Capitol. Um, so, yeah. Cause like both you and, um, 
and the Gishelli guys do do kind of a similar sort of thing. I mean, the last time I remember, I ran into them in in uh, was it was it a, was it Capital? I think they re- they had uh, a meetup with a bunch of their like a bunch of their fans or whatever as well. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, we always kind of end up with Gishelli in the room. So like a lot of my viewers and and patrons are fans of Gishelli and they're super laid back and and really mm-hmm. cool people. Great people. So. Yeah. We always just kind of end up hanging out in their room after hours or um, even during the show and stuff like that. That's cool. We actually, we invited them uh, uh, to write a little, uh, a little sort of article for us about the, how they got started and everything. And we just actually, we just posted it up on the site last week and I think Sherry wrote it and it's, it's got some great old pictures of, um, of Gino when he was like uh, really young and a bass player and how they all, all like photos of them when they, we're working out of their house and everything. And, uh, it was, it's, 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 it's a, it's a great little, little write up. It's a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, You know what I love about that story is like, it was born out of love. It wasn't born out of, Hey, let's make some money making decks. You know, mm-hmm. it was Gino making stuff because, you know, he couldn't afford stuff at the time. And it really resonated with me. So I love, I love companies that are actually passionate about the products that they're making. Oh yeah, and of course everyone's going to make money. We, I get that, but you know there there seems to be a disconnect with some big companies when it comes to the products that they're making. But I feel like this kind of the industry is having a bit of a renaissance when it comes to um, smaller companies that now with the internet and everything, you know, they can compete with mm-hmm. with the bigger companies because you know they don't have to worry about dealer networks and things like that. So it's really cool to see, you know, direct to customer companies like Gishelli, like, um, Schitt audio, like, uh, um, Emotiva, you know, just mm-hmm. really crushing it. And, uh, some of the other m- bigger companies that, you know, are maybe part of, uh, umbrella of companies, you know, right. I wouldn't right. say they've lost their way at all, but, um, no, they just have different priorities or, or yeah. different, uh, you know, different yeah. motivations and stuff. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, like Gishelli, for example, I mean, like you said, you started off as a, as a, out of love, as a, as a passion project, as a, mm-hmm. something you wanted to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just kind of, you know, took off from there. And, uh, it, and even like when we were in Italy and, and, and meeting those three companies, I mean, the stories the, but the product was was obviously really compelling. But the stories behind behind all those companies are kind of what really kind of stuck and sort of resonated with me. And yeah. I just did the, the story is a big story is a big deal. And I think and, and and not enough people and not enough companies. I mean, all companies have a history and have a story. Right. Yeah. But not enough of them. I think either you know either leverage it or talk about it or 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 you know. Yeah, it, it should be there. up there in lights, right? Because yeah. if I have, the, if I'm, and I actually talked to Idle Live Stream this morning, and somebody was talking about whether they should get a pair of Arendal speakers or a pair of Opera loudspeakers. Mm-hmm. As a, I'm the wrong guy to ask about this because I'd say Opera all day long because I've been there, I've met the guy. But if you're if you're listening to something, even if something is maybe in better is a hard word to say because you know who are we to say if something is better right Mm it it might not be better if there's certain products that just aren't good but most of the other products are all good and it's just a flavor but if i'm looking at one speaker same price i'm buying the opera because i know Mm -hmm. i number one i've seen it made number two you know i i talked to them and I've, i've been in their place and i know their story that's a family run company and if, if a company's really should lean into like what they're about and why yeah. they do the things that they do and get to know, I think, you know, these, these press junkets, I think are important because, yeah. you know, you're going to buy from the people that you like and, you know, the, the products are going to be good. But if I know the owner of opera, I don't know the owner of Arendal. Right. I'm buying opera. No, and I, then the support that you get from like Fidelity Imports and, and, and places like that. I mean, yeah, you can't. I don't know. Well, it's it, it's it's that's valuable. 
I mean, as a story sure. and, 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 and the support and stuff, I mean, that's, that's huge. That's valuable. I mean, these days, everything, most of the stuff you see in a big box store, well, big box stores to other places you go to is it just feels like a commodity item you know it mm-hmm. just feels disposable like you're not meant to it's not meant to last or there's yeah. not much to it and you know when you have something that's got history you know story depth to it that that just mm-hmm. adds that just adds value and and what's well, also yeah. the emotional attachment like uh, with anything like if you're gonna pick and like uh if you're watching a sporting event for for example in there's a great player that doesn't talk and there's the one guy that does talk. It'll it'll either be divisive where like you identify with this person or you don't. And then then we you can actually just pick kind of your side and just be like I that's why I like this. Like you like opera cuz you've met them, right? Mm-hmm. And so you've like sort of like not a, not just foster a relationship with them, but you got to know their story and it resonated with you, right? But, yeah. And when I, I when I outsider. see Yeah, and and you can't really you can't divorce that. So when I see uh, a unison uh, research or an opera loudspeaker, mm-hmm. you know, there's an association there with that yeah. family. So like that's ingrained. That's, that's there. It's never going to go away. Where if I see something from JBL, now I know a couple of people from JBL, but like, it doesn't have that same weight. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important for companies um, to have, members of the press out and to get to know them and things and tell their stories. I mean, it's a valuable, we live in a, in a world now where, you know, YouTube is a huge thing. And then you have, you know, legacy online magazines, and then you have legacy print magazines and, you know, to be able to, you know, get all those different, you know, I guess different verticals of, of content creators. And, you know, back then they were, what would you call them journalists or whatever Mm -hmm. now we're all content creators and you know to get us together and and talk about a brand i think brands are missing the mark if they don't really lean into that and embrace it you know camera camera companies have been doing it for decades Mm -hmm. you know opera in unison they've been making stuff since the 80s the 90s like that's Mm -hmm. a long time to be making products all within the same building or you know Mm -hmm. the buildings maybe have moved or whatever but it's you know, right. that's a cool story. It's not, it's, oh, we sub this out to China, you know, yeah. and we're, we're deciding, you know, you know, which capacitors to use because we can save 10 cents per receiver. Right. And, you know, it's, um, they're putting stuff in there that, that they want to because it's their, their family and they have to stand behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. So. And they're keeping everything pretty much as local as they can in, in, in Italy, basically. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's not farmed out somewhere. It's like, yeah, it's, it's right yeah. there. So, yeah, no, it's, it's very true. So man. having no familiarity with opera at all, like what's their, like, are they, are they speakers, amplifiers? What do they make? Yeah. So opera is speakers and then unison research is amplifiers. Mm-hmm. And they're and the they same company off or? Say again? They're the same company or? Well, they are now. Com- yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I don't know if they have separate P&Ls or whatever, but they started off separate um, in the eighties, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, um, over time, the, those companies kind of combined, and uh, they're all made under the same roof now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, and opera does, and, and operas. I mean, they deal with mostly tube stuff, uh, tube or hybrid. So yeah, either yeah. all tube or combination tube and solid state. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's beautiful stuff, and it sounds really sounds really pretty. Yeah, cool. the the Unico Primo, which is their most affordable integrated mm-hmm. amplifier, is just. It's bananas good. It's ridiculous how good it is. Very nice. Very nice. Does it have tone controls? <laughs> Say again. <laughs> does it have tone controls? Uh, I don't know if it does. Or not. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> That's my deciding factor. Taps no. has got a thing for tone controls. <laughs> it does not. But yeah, I mean, you can put like a Wee Ultra front end on it, and you have a ten band EQ, parametric EQ, room mm-hmm. correction, all for the low low price of three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Uh, digital output it's got an onboard DAC if you need it hdmi input it's hdmi arcs you can really modernize anything the the uh, unico primo is like legit just an analog mm-hmm. in- integrated amp that's all it is there's yeah, no yeah. DAC, no phono stage you can spec a phono stage mm-hmm. so you have to put a DAC on there or you have to put something on yeah. there and you know there's a bunch of stuff out there that has dome controls in there 
it does not have analog tone controls. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a demonstration of why Randy is so good at what he does, man. Just like, <laughs> it just flows. Well, <laughs> it just flows. We've probably done like 10 Weem reviews, so you probably know. Oh, that. way more than that. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I've done so many videos that have the Weem. And here's the thing. Like, some people think I'm a Weem shill. If it works, it works. I'm not. I mean, it's cheap. Like, if somebody can give me another product that does as much as the Ween does, as good as the Ween does, at the same price, not even the same price, show me one that can do it at twice the price. Yeah. And I'll do backflips over that one, too, and I'll put it up in lights. But the, the thing is, there isn't anything yeah. out there. It's that funny does you mentioned it does. It's funny you mentioned Ween because uh, from at CD, I, I shot a little video of. Uh, at the blue sound booth and uh, they had their three their three new like yeah. nodes that they mm -hmm. had and um i mean the video has, has got has gotten a, uh, some good traction but the the biggest thing about it was there's all these comments saying you know yeah, what about the weem what about, what about the weem you know the weem can do this yeah. for like blah 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 and then what about the weed what about the weem and, it's and like, i love blue sound I, mm -hmm. I i absolutely love blue sound i think they they do a fantastic job and but Ween kind of came out of nowhere, and, and yeah, you know, it's a cliche thing to say about you know market disruptor. And I mean, we're we're talking about a very small market here because not only are we talking about like high fine home theater, but then we're talking about okay, just the streamer portion of that. It's tiny mm -hmm. microcosm, uh, right? Mm -hmm. But they disrupted it, man. Like yeah. they just kicked it like the Kool Aid guy. Remember the Kool Aid commercials where he'd like just kick in the wall and be like, here, here, I'm here. Like that was what Ween did, right? Oh, and man. then, except he's not a fat guy or a chunk of Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, it's a streamer. Yeah, uh, it's a streamer with feet kicking the wall. <laughs> we, had, we had a guy in our, in our neighborhood we used to call Kool Aid because he was a big yeah. guy. Yeah. Hey, Kool Aid. <laughs> um. There's a Jim Jones joke in there, but I'm going to stay away from it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's uh, the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back to But then when they, they like, so Weem is a great example or kind of a case study almost of like a direct to customer at the time, Chinese mm -hmm. company, Chi Fi company that comes in. Mm -hmm. And now you can go to Crutchfield and buy a Weem Ultra. So you don't just have to buy it on Amazon anymore. Now uh, you have U.S. support and U.S. distribution um, with major manufacturers. Like Klipsch has Weems on their website. Uh, you can get oh, them wow, at Crutchfield really now, and, and uh, you can get them at Audio Advice, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a company that's come in at a price point that just shattered everybody else. Then they did a bunch of whoever they have on board doing like their um, updates and their um, software engineering, like mm – -hmm is crushing it because they put out a, a firmware update. Like it seems like every other day. And oh, then man. they, then they unlock room correction on a $150 product. It's so it was crazy. a free update. They didn't put out a new product and charge more for it. They just mm -hmm. updated their existing products with room correction. And like, that is, that is almost, you know, borderline unheard of. Right. Um, so, right. That's like the ultimate value add. Yeah. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I love Weem because um, mm -hmm. they're cheap and they're good and they go above and beyond. Well, it makes sense. We need more of that, actually. We don't, yeah, we don't that, really get enough of do. that out there. Yeah, yeah for especially sure. Especially with firmware that doesn't destroy your component, which like sometimes Sonos. happens. Oh, so, yeah. So enough. <laughs> did you hear that one? Are they still yes. down or is they finally no, fixed it? No, I think it? They've, they've fixed it. But I, like, I did a video on it. Uh, a little bit spicy. It was called The Death of Corporate Hi-Fi Starring Sonos. And oh, no. I, I went through and I talked about, you know, that firmware. I went through, looked at their stock price. And then I looked murdered. at, like, Vox's stock price, which mm. owns Klipsch and Onkyo and Pioneer and everything. And then I looked at Massimo's stock, uh, stock price, and they own Sound United. Mm -hmm. And just how it's just been a mess for these oh, larger yeah. corporate hi-fi companies. I don't know how I don't know how Massimo's is going to unload uh, unload oh, them because they, they want do to. It. I, I uh, mean, I don't know how they're going to take a huge bath. I don't know if they're going to sell them off one at a time or not. But I don't know who's around. The, who's around like to buy? I don't know the, who would want to buy them. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, how much money are they actually making? Uh, 
your guess is as good as mine, but I mean, so it, someone's take... going to have to do some due dil- diligence on that. And I think, I think when the ink is finally dry on those Excel spreadsheets, they'll be like, I don't know if we want this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there's I, it's just a few, I can't think of any prospects who have that kind of money who would take, cause I think they want to unload them all at once, yeah. kind of like all of them together. And I don't know, uh, people out there with enough money that would a want to make that sort of gamble and and b want to do what it takes to you know really reform those things and and get those brands and get them you know the attention and the and and everything they they need or deserve or whatever so i mean yeah it's it's a mess it's it's an absolute mess so (laughs) unless they all go back to being small which i don't know how possible that is well Um, i mean they own them so someone would have to Buy one at a time. Someone have to buy the name, the the rights to the name or something, and then want to kind of redo it. But I, somebody at Massimo and the board that said, "Hey, this is a great idea. Let's spend a billion dollars on Sound United or whatever mm-hmm. it was." Right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder what the conversation is like now. Well, um, so the CEO was a Joe Kiani. He's he's gone now or whatever, but he's. Uh, what the, the, there's all sorts of lawsuits and stuff going on and and everything so it's it's probably it's, not it, a conversation happening <laughs> yeah that's probably not <laughs> not between people between lawyers and uh and, yeah. lawyer and, and law firms is what's happening so whatever whatever it's this is crazy no it's a sad deal because i mean there's such awesome legacy brands oh, yeah. in there like i mean polk b&w mm-hmm. yeah um den and morantz you know Class A, which they've which they've like completely shut down and gutted or whatever, but that's in there too. And B and W, you know, yeah, they, those brands like they need to live on, right? It's um, uh, yeah. So I'm hopeful, but uh, I'm hopeful, but I'm not necessarily optimistic. But I'm yeah. hopeful. Yeah, well, fingers crossed on that. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. But anyhow, one thing I actually noticed when we were on our on our Italy trip was that uh, you and uh, you and Steve had a very big penchant for watches. Um, oh yeah. Well, watches and cameras and stuff. But I mean, you guys yeah. were like talking watches like yeah. uh, for a yeah, while. Yeah. Oh man. What, uh, what, what is it about it that, uh, well, I, mean, I think I know the answer, but what is it about it? That's just so appealing about. Oh uh, man. Uh, it's hundred, 200 year old technology that is completely obsolete that nobody needs Mm -hmm. um, that's on your wrist that can tell time through springs and, and, and winding things. And, you know, you have little gears, little (laughs) tiny gears that need to be maintained and stuff. And it's, it's one of those things where to think about, to think like, okay, in the 1800s, somebody is like, machining these little parts and putting them together and it's uh and how important like wrist watches were and r- regular watches you know but how important they were like um world war one and stuff like that and um i don't know it just fascinates me and mm. i mean i think there has to be something there with like the um what it signifies, you know, yeah. what it represents, you know, some of the, the luxury brands and stuff. It's, you know, if you wear a Rolex, you've made it or, or whatever it is like mm-hmm. um, the status of it a little bit. So there's, yeah, a huge status part of it, but I love, it's like you're wearing a little piece of engineering artwork on your wrist and mm-hmm. it's not necessary, but it's, oh, yeah. it's really cool. I mean, jewelry is not necessarily, I mean, hi-fi is not necessary, you know, none nah. of this stuff is necessary, but. I've always no. gotten a kick out of, out of watches. Um, so, from are you a cheap age. watch guy, or do you do you, <laughs> like the ones that you wear all the time? Are you like are you spending a bit more on those because you like the craftsmanship yeah. of? Yeah. So, I mean, I wear expensive watches, but um, I also, you know, I've wore some and have some in my personal collection. You know, some very um, I won't call them, you know, cheap. You know, some Seiko, some Orients, and stuff like that. Stuff that's sub $200, sub $500. But most of the stuff I wear is, is pretty expensive. You know, Omega, I know, um, Carlo has an Omega and, uh, 
and Rolex and Tudor and stuff like that. I get a kick out of those. And then well, here's one of the reasons why is because these watches, I'm, I mean, I'm wearing a Rolex now, but this watch, if properly maintained, will last, I don't know, a hundred years, maybe even longer, you know, if it's, if it's continued, continued to be maintained. So this is, it's a huge expense and it's a big purchase, but you know, it's something that can be, that will live on. Mm-hmm. You know, you can, you can if you buy a ten thousand dollar streamer, you're not passing that ten thousand dollar streamer down to your grandkids. No. If you buy a ten thousand dollar watch, you can pass that down to your grandkids. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I get I, I like that. It's okay. a weird thing. Yeah. How long does a I I don't know anything about watches. Like how long does a battery last in those things? Like well, these don't have batteries. Are they so, powered off your body or something? Or yeah, automatic? so you wind them and then as you move it 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 continues to tighten that self-wind itself a little bit yeah okay yeah. yeah the batteries are for quartz watches and those there are some really nice quartz watches but um for the most part guys that are really into watches are into mechanical watches yeah. which are the the ones I, that you wind i mean if i have i have this one on i you know i put it on in the morning and I've wound it, you know, once I set the time, and but I have it on in the morning. And if I'm wearing it through the day, it'll it'll keep going, and I'll take it off at night, and it'll still have enough, you know, um, mm-hmm. self winding energy in it that it'll keep going through the night. And then next morning, put it on, and then whenever I, as I'm walking or doing whatever, it just the mechanism, and it's just self wind self winds itself. Yeah. So that's that's a whole basis. Oh, so you don't have to on. wind it every morning. No, nope. no. No, that's the whole basis behind an automatic movement. That's that's they kind of self do that along with the movement yeah. of your arm and and everything as you go about your day. So cool, but yeah. But I mean, I just remember as a, as a kid, you almost didn't see automatics anymore unless yeah, you know, they were all everything was quartz. For yeah, a while. yeah, everything was digital quartz. That was the, the the big thing, you know. Even I remember the little the the little digital watches that had the little calculator buttons on them. Oh I yeah, 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 Marty McFly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I even, yeah. I even remember when uh, when Sony came out with the little <laughs> with the little uh, watch that had like a T a little CRT TV screen in it <laughs> or or LCD TV screen in it or whatever, and uh, and that was supposedly the big thing. But then all of a sudden, automatics you know came back with with a vengeance. And yeah, uh, I had a cheap um, off brand Transformers watch. Oh my like goodness! The, the, awesome. Pull the thing off and it transforms. You know, that's awesome. Oh uh, you know, the, there's that's a good analogy between like, um, so the the legacy mechanical watches. You know, a bunch of them went under um, mm. during what's called the quartz crisis, mm-hmm. um, and then there was a resurgence and some con- consolidation. But there's been a bit, bit of a renaissance when it comes to mechanical watches that has come back, um, and I, I hope to see. You know, there's some parallels with hi-fi there, and I. I hope to see that you know some of this stuff goes away and then you know mm-hmm. it comes back smaller more nimble and um more powerful and if anything like film photography is a great example of this mm-hmm. um because you know kodak was interestingly enough kodak created the first digital camera yeah um and they didn't want to push it because obviously their cash cow was film film yeah yeah um which kodak might be in another story if you know they had really leaned into digital oh totally yeah yeah if they totally but, went that direction but like the film photography there is a very small portion of the market that is it's a very healthy market now people that shoot on film and people that you know will uh do the um exposure the developing and, and, and yeah yep. developing so like while it's not ubiquitous like it used to be, it's a very healthy cottage industry now because mm-hmm. of the the love of the people going back to kind of like Giselle Labs, the love of the people that are involved with this. Like the people that are in business doing film photography love film mm-hmm. photography. And so it's going to stick around. So I think as soon as we get corporate people that don't understand why people listen mm-hmm. to products, why people listen... Yeah. Like I think that is like the beginning of the end for a company. Yeah, and again, when they get taken over by by groups or interests that are solely focused on the bottom line, it uh, yeah. Yeah, I, becomes... I, I have a friend that shoots on expired film sometimes, just to, yeah, just because he can, but he knows what he's doing, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, 
I remember, I did, I regret this day, I used to have a Nikon F100 that I loved to shoot. And uh, back when I used to live in California, there was one, yeah, there was only, I mean, there were obviously like, you know, 24 hour or whatever, or one hour photo developers everywhere, but there was one lab um, and it was like a little, just a little shop, but they actually took the time to go through every one of your shots as they were as they were processing it and they would take the time to dial everything in to get the best possible result out of out of the shots you took and i remember being in there and and they were walking me through what they did and it was like yeah yes it cost more to develop to develop my film there like but the time they took i mean i didn't mind waiting a couple a couple of days for my film but the time they took and the care they took and in, in making my pictures and making me look like a better photographer than i ever was I mean, it was, was, I mean, it was invaluable and, yeah. you know, you, you don't, you don't, it, it's, it's rare to find that. And if, if that is coming back, I'm all for it. I would love to see more of that. I wonder how much of like, like, cause you were talking about like time and effort, but like, I wonder how much of that will start to play a role in the way that technology moves or that maybe the resurgence of old technology where like everything see, is seemingly about like, cheap um fast and easy like and that's kind of like whether whether it's hi-fi or whether it's like a camera like everyone has a phone in their pocket and can take a, a picture with their iphone and it always looks good because of its computational photography but like going manual or just going to like something that's a little bit more takes a bit more effort takes a bit mm -hmm. more intention mm -hmm. i wonder how much more of that will slowly start to rear its head you know, as far as like coming back or like people getting or away just from like it. like of that just maybe being in the zeitgeist and then maybe well, that vinyl, influencing. Man. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Well, vinyl like is inconvenient. It doesn't sound as good for the most mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You can get at Target or, or Walmart now. Yeah. You can go buy vinyl at Target or Walmart. Like, who would have thought that, right? You can find vinyl at my local Aldi's, for goodness sakes. Never mind. <laughs> Never Aldi's. mind. Is Aldi's yeah. a place where you have to pay a quarter to get a shopping yep. cart? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's also most of Canada. It's just... <laughs> I walked in there one time, man, and, like, I didn't know how this whole place act. Like, what's going on here? And I'm like, nope. That was done. <laughs> Adios. Well, was one and done with Aldi. Mm. Yeah, do you guys have to play, pay for shopping bags there, or is that just Canada, In Texas? Yeah. yeah, no, man, no, no. All yeah. these you have to bring your own shopping, your own your own shopping bags to the to. Uh, is it really to... that good? Do you really save that much money? No, I I have a bunch of uh, recyclable shopping bags like all over my house and in my car. And mm -hmm. I almost always forget them when I go to the grocery store. They're they're hung up in our garage, and and yeah, half the time we we don't we forget to take a take a bunch of them if we go. You know what they're really Aldi... good for though is moving records. There is that. <laughs> there is you that. Fit, yeah. You can fit about like forty into each bag, and then every time I have to move, I just yeah, for like the thousands of records that I have, it just like it makes the car trips easier. All these is like owned by the same uh, the same group that owns Trader Joe's or whatever. So um... no, I don't love Trader Joe's either. Mm. No, no. Uh, my kids though, there, there's a. I like their mac and cheese that my daughter loves, but I hate going to Trader Joe's so much. And during the, you know, the the health crisis that we had a few years ago, mm -hmm. they would only let one person in at a time, or they oh, they yeah. only had like they'd only allow a certain amount in. So I would have to wait to get in, mm -hmm. and I hated that. So I that. and I don't like the store anyway. So what is I it about go, the store they hate so much? I don't know, man. Like it seems so granola and crunchy, and like so. It's like, very Cal it's very California. That's where it was founded. Yeah, and Pasadena. Like, they're being different for the sake of being different, and like I don't know, man. So I would go in there and I'd find the um, the mac and cheese, and I would buy like forty mac and cheeses because I didn't want to go <laughs> back. So I I would literally just go and buy a ton, and I like. There's something also weird about the checkout process that oh, I got yeah. screwed up like the first time, and so I'm like, nope. I'll so what are you? Are you like an HEB guy then, or no, man? HEB is stupid too. Um, <laughs> um, Whole Foods all the way for you? <laughs> no, God, no. Whole Foods. That's like I'm, I'm out of American grocery stores. I don't know. That's anymore. like the IKEA of of like 
it's like a it's like you're going to a, a casino like you can't <laughs> there's no straight lines in whole foods you like you just lose yourself there's no clocks you don't know what's going on mm. and um no i go to walmart neighborhood market baby i know where everything's at in and out mm. Um, we use our local uh, IGA. It's it's the one in the town, and uh, that's where everyone goes that? to. Oh yeah, yeah. The Independent Grocers Association. Yeah, they're still there. They have, it's one little family operation that's still there. We go there, and probably if we need to shop, do like a big thing, we go to like Kroger's the next town over or whatever. So, but yeah, yeah. Did we have a new H E B, and people loved it so much that they had to put cones up in the lane of traffic next to the HEB. Really? And at that, and at that point, I, I vowed never to go into HEB. Is it like classically super cheap there or something? Or No, it's not. I mean, no? I don't know. They have a bunch of like store brands and stuff that um, that people like. But I refuse to go in there because like I'm very like, um, what's the word? If somebody loves something, I automatically hate it. Like oh, if everybody so you, loves something. You're, like, uh, you got to go to this restaurant. You got to go to this store. I'm like, no, so I don't. So it's a counter. Uh, um, counter I forget culture? that. I'm no, that it's culture, contrarian. The, contrarian. Are, that's yeah, it. That's the I'm thing. very yeah. contrarian yeah. when it comes to HEB. <laughs> I only know the name of it from like podcasts like Kill Tony where I'm just like, oh, okay, that's, that's I guess that's a grocery store. Man. Yeah, but <laughs> it's. The only reason I would say I, I will go into Trader Joe's is a because of the mac and cheese. That frozen mac and cheese is, is is good. I can attest to that. But they also have these. I'm a sucker. Oh, you can tell by my body size. I'm a sucker for <laughs> choc chocolate croissants. Yeah, you're like an avatar. They have these. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they have these frozen chocolate croissants that you can get that are just like you, you get them out. You put them on a tray. Just like let them, you know, rise overnight. Then you cook, bake them in the morning, and they are just dynamite absolutely dynamite so where do you get them trader joe's oh trader joe's yeah i gotta yep. say like uh whenever i do end up in the states i immediately just go to your grocery stores because they're so like this selection of product is so much better than what we get here like really? oh yeah just like the we like we have a whole foods here and it's okay it's not nothing great but you go to the one in like i went when i go to like clearwater florida when i used to go anyway mm -hmm. like the wall of beverages of like the pre-made like your your shakes or your it just it 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 vastly out outpaces what we have in canada like you guys have milk in your pre-made coffee we only have like oat milk and shit up here it sucks and like just everything's so much better like this <laughs> like the pop tart selection we have like six types of pop tarts you guys have 35 it's just like what is going on like so like, I just, whenever I can, like if I, if there's a Trader Joe's, I'll go in and I'll grab like the, I got like the Cuban lime spice mix. It's like, I'm going to grab all of those things that I could easily bring across the border because they're amazing. <laughs> but like, yeah. No, you think I, that... I guess I, I shouldn't be complaining because. No, no, no. I'm not saying like do. you have the, the luxury of choice. So of yeah. course be biased. But the yeah, that... for me, I'm just like, yeah, give me everything. But the thing is, when I go up to Canada to visit to visit my mom, I mean, I, I hit I, I'll hit I don't know how I'll get to grocery stores, but I'll hit a Loblaws up there, and there's so much stuff there that we can't get down here like snack what? wise. Well, I mean, it's the, it's most yeah, get it. We're talking about sweets again, knowing me, uh, the chocolates that I used to remember as a kid, you go to and, the and so, I know it's 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 a sickness. Um, cookies, literally, and, it's type and, two diabetes. I'm just kidding. It, it, yeah, I'm a walk I'm, I'm a walking diabetes ad. Tell me about it. Um, but the thing I remember the most that, that just when I first brought my wife up to Toronto to visit my folks, the thing she like just couldn't wrap her head around was that how milk is available in bags in like the It's those, the stupidest thing. It's I never understood it as a kid, but you can get bags of milk that are like individual like was it liters in like bag yeah. in like little plastic clear bags that you put it in a I guess you're supposed to put it milk. in a yeah. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's a bladder of milk, and you put it in a, in a pitcher, and you, like, you know, the scissors cut a hole at one end, and then you just sort of pour it out. It's like she could never wrap her head around that. And, and I mean, and thinking getting it on into it now, the pitcher sucks. Because, like, if you yeah, get it in wrong you, for the, the next week, you have this milk that pours wrong. And, and I, yeah, and I don't know why my, my mom, for some reason, just can't wrap her head around the fact that, you know, milk in a carton. When I visit, I bought milk in a cart. She says, why didn't you buy the bags? And it's like, 
well, you're one person. You can't go through th these three bags of milk. I mean, you just don't. And it's like, I want the bags. And it's like, oh, I want the bags. Okay. I think so your mom likes the bags. She digs it. I mean, and I don't know why. The bag, the <laughs> bag of milk is in my household because my parents are Indian. And so we'd have the bag of milk and you have this cheap like dollar store plastic jar that every family has. And you yep. stick it in there. But then they also had like the same plastic jar in their bathroom to wash their ass with. And so like the association of like every time you, you pour your milk, it's like, oh, that's the, it's just like, you can't, it's just, it's like the worst thing. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Thank I'm not me. familiar with your bags of milk, man. <laughs> yeah, well, you just, should, you should, you should like do a no, it's just not worth bag it. milk. It's totally not worth it. <laughs> it's, it's not. I mean, <laughs> when I was in the Navy, they had like these huge bladders of milk that they would put into like this wall type of like dispenser. Mm -hmm. Like I've never seen bags of milk for like, cons like regular. Oh consumer yeah. People. It's for years as a kid they, that would. That Is this would, a Canadian thing? Yeah, it's definitely a Canadian yeah. thing. Yeah, you can watch yeah. videos of NBA players coming to Toronto and just trying to figure out how to drink milk. It's friggin' hilarious. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, "What are you supposed to do with this breast implant of milk?" But <laughs> it's but, yeah, okay. It's... So curiously, uh, so, as so you're in the name. Does anybody actually watch or listen to these podcasts? We got a whole because... six people last time, I think. <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's. But curiously, so you mentioned the Navy. Did your fascination of watches come, like, did you wear a watch in the Navy and that's kind of how that happened? Or you just always No, learned? I mean, I was a kid. So I grew up in the 80s when Swatch was a thing. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was early enough, like, when I grew up that, you know, everybody had a watch. Um, like most people. So it was, it was a utility thing in the 80s. Um, so... Swatch was cool, so I think maybe that's where kind of my love of watches started, but um, everybody had a watch back then. But, yeah, in the Navy I had a watch, but, I mean, I didn't wear, like, fancy watches in the Navy. I wore um, uh, Casios or I had an Iron Man watch, a little digital watch and stuff. I think, I think everyone, still... Was that the hexagon one or the, ex, the octagon one? Or... I think they have a bunch of them With now. With the dial that yeah. rotated yeah. or something? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't rotate, but, I mean, we had to know what time it was. You know, oh, you well, a sub, so <laughs> yeah, everybody had a watch. How yeah. long were you in a sub for? Um, ninety days usually is how long we were down. Oh no, oh, sorry, like like duration of being in the navy was oh eight years, but I wasn't on subs the whole time. So I mean, I was I served in submarine duty for like three. Mm. Wow, is it like super freaky being on one, or yeah, just knowing like how under the ocean you are? Or on yeah. the surface you are? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't to say it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you don't think about it, though. I mean, everybody that's on there has, like, been screened, you know, for, like, their mental, um, I don't know, wherewithal, I guess would be yeah. the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Their um, mental durability? <laughs> yes, their mental durability is a very, very good way to explain it. But Are you able to divulge what some of those tests are, or is it just... Is it just? I don't even know. I mean, I guess they put us through a battery of uh, like questionnaires and stuff like that. But um, so I was a nuke, which means I worked in the engine room. So we have a completely different school than the rest of the people. So anybody that doesn't work in the engine room, they have to apply and go to and then pass what's called sub school. So I guess that is kind of the way to, you know, weed out the people that couldn't make it. So I have no idea what sub school looks like because I didn't have to go through it. Um, but it's an all volunteer force. And so number one, you have to want to be there. And number two, the people that not everybody that wants to be there can be there. So there is a, a process that way, but, um, I don't remember like what the screening was. It, it is interesting though, that all of the, so when you learn, because you have to qualify on different systems basically. So you have to become a expert on whatever you're doing. So when you learn that there are no, um, there are no written tests. Every test is conducted orally with another person. So the only way that you like, if, if for instance, like, 
in our house. Like I would have to get a checkout or certified on um, my heating and cooling system in the house. So you don't answer questions. You literally have to go talk to someone that's been doing it. And then they ask you questions and then they determine whether or not you passed. And then if, if you didn't pass, then they determine what you need to know to come back and then get recertified. And then once you've certified on all of the systems, then you have to go in front of a board of three people. And the only thing that you get is a marker or a piece of chalk. And then they ask you questions and they say, draw this out or draw this system out, or how does this interact? So you have three human beings that, you know, are basically testing you and judging you and either, either pass or you don't pass. Um, so there's no like 90% it's either pass or fail. So everything is done on, uh, an open board or a three person board for the really high end, like the finals, I guess, of your exams. Okay. Oh, wow. So then I, I have one other potentially stupid question is my only familiarity with submarines is for movies. Yeah. So, but when you're actually on a submarine, what does it sound like? Does it like, cause when you're on a plane, you hear engines and yeah. air and noise. It's kind of similar. I, you know, so subs need to be quiet, right? Yeah. But when you're in the engine room, there's a ton of rotating machinery. Um, but yeah, there's just kind of just that 60 hertz, 120, you know, that hum, mm, yeah. you know, constantly. Um, so there's machinery going on. But it's it's fairly quiet, but you have to wear um, earplugs and stuff like that. I mean, you don't have to, but you'll go deaf. But <laughs> um, the front of the boat, you know, again, I, I only worked in the engine room, you know, yeah. but... Yeah, there's just kind of that machinery hum going on at all times. Okay, and then how long before you come up? Like, do you have to like decompress or something like that? Or no, I mean it's it's pressurized. Um, okay, how long? Like, we, how long? We were you... usually submerged for eighty seven days, but I was on a different type of boat because my boat carried nuclear missiles. Mm -hmm. So, like, our whole deal was hide. Yeah, <laughs> don't be Stealthy. found. Be sneaky. Because um, if we ever had to do what we did, you know, you know, they obviously somebody would want to know where we're at and then they would want to kill us so yes. that we don't fire <laughs> missiles. Yeah. Um, so uh, run silent, run deep is, is what we did. Mm. Man. Do you ever get like super stressful at any point or you can't just talk about yeah, that stuff? Or... Constantly. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean, so it's not necessarily the work that was stressful. I mean, it was hard, don't get me wrong, but it was, you know, the mental aspect of it. And so, you know, the, there's a lot of inner, and when I was uh, serving, it was only men. And so there would be, you know, people getting fights. Um, yeah. Not, not necessarily like physical fights, but there would be arguments. But, yeah. It's almost like a study in like human psychology, though, and human stress rather mm -hmm. than like the actual work conditions. Because if you're working on a power plant, you know, here, uh, you know, above water, like you get to go home, right? Mm -hmm. like you don't get to go home. Like you get to go to sleep. Yeah. But, you know, you're there always mm -hmm. with the same people. And so I've, we, we'd have what was, we called it hate week. And hate week was, it was generally about 65, 70% of the way through a patrol. And it was long enough, like, you knew you were over halfway there, but you also knew that it wasn't, wasn't close enough to really get excited. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was just like on edge. On at all time. And um, so there's a lot of arguments. And, oh my God. Yeah. So it was nuts, man. Oh, geez. That sounds it. So you're pretty chill, like just I was talking. Say, surprisingly so like, chill. Is that for a guy. is that from being there, or is that just 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 overall? Oh, or are you just I mean, like you, I get, high as shit? I, like what? I get upset sometimes, um, emotional. Um, no, I don't know, man. I mean, I've just always, yeah. I I don't know. It could be, maybe maybe not. But I mean, I try to be pretty chill. You know, when I was younger, I'd get pissy and. 
have a big ego and no, we make all sure that I had to be right. You know, that's the one thing is like, I've, I've learned that it's okay to be wrong. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's, I would rather be right and not say that I'm right just because I don't care. Like, I don't want to fight this battle. I'm not, this is not a hill that I want to die on, you know, for talking about capacitors or crossovers or oh, something yes. like that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. does it sound good? Do you enjoy it? Okay. Then it's fine. Like, I don't need to say, I don't need to be a king maker of, of hi-fi products. Like, they're all good for the most mm -hmm. part. Most stuff is really good. It's hard to find something really, truly bad out there. I mean, yeah. You know, it, 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 there's more good stuff than there is bad stuff out there, and it, I, I think audio-wise. Yeah. I, it's I, pretty I easy totally to avoid the that. bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and people that put out bad stuff probably aren't going to stay in business very long. Mm -hmm. True enough. True enough. Is there anything Is there anything that you're excited about audio-wise that's uh, you're, you're either going to be getting to review soon or that you see that out there that's, like, really got your, really got your interest? Cambridge came out with some new stuff and I've got it out there. I haven't spent a lot of time, but I love Cambridge. I think their stuff is great. Mm. Um, there's nothing like that jumps off the page uh, outside of camp. Oh, I got a pair of Dolly speakers in. Oh, so which they're ones? floor standers. Epicor uh, ones? The Rubicors or the. And so it's a step below Rubicors. Um, okay. Opticon or. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um... Decepticon. Decepticon. <laughs> yeah, there's Opticon, Optimus there's Epicor, Prime. and then there's something else, right? Yeah, I think it's it I is, think it's Opticon. It is the most affordable one that has the two tweeters. So there's a ribbon mm. tweeter and a soft dome. Mm. Um and that's what I have. And I'm I'll be curious. super excited about that. I'll be curious Actually, to get your, your, your take on those today. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about those. Dolly Dolly does, is they, they they know what they're doing. They they do just some amazing stuff, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm, they need to have a press tour because like there's a story behind Dolly, and that that it just hasn't been told. I've been I've been there once, and of it was you have well, it's freaking but guy, uh, they should get. I don't they know should, how you get these gigs, man. Like I'm going to Japan. I don't know either. I'm going I just, to Scandinavia. Just, I get I get I get emails, and just you know it's I hard. I, I just say yes, <laughs> but I'm sure I'm sure they'll they'll want you to come along too, especially after after they get your your take on uh on on these uh on these speakers i mean they they i know they're last i heard they were planning on doing another one next year so um you know they that put that in a good word for me i will Marco, 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 absolutely Marco. absolutely maybe yeah, they might be one of the 10 people that watch this podcast so <laughs> yeah. maybe there's a scandinavian sasquatch that we can find <laughs> <laughs> that we had this whole <laughs> Jeff okay. has no clue. We have this whole inside. <laughs> we have this whole inside joke when we were in Italy going on about uh, about the Italian the Italian name for Sasquatch and and uh, or Bigfoot and uh, we came up with a Pede Grande, which is like it means, basically yeah. means like big feet in Italian, and <laughs> and so we were we were kind of uh, just riffing on this whole Italian Bigfoot thing the entire trip. And I'm sure we were probably driving people crazy. We were just like left. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, but the, um, the revenge of the pedigree. What was that? Yeah. The, uh, Oh God. We came <laughs> up with it. We came up with all these movie ideas. Movie right, 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 right. Oh, I need, I, I'd have to go back. But it sounded remember. really good in Italian. Like it all this stuff just was hilarious in Italian. But, yeah. Uh, Carlo and I, have a very similar sense of humor i think so like i think we were bugging people yeah <laughs> you were getting on people's nerves slightly bent sense of humor oh man well we've been going on this for like what like an hour now is that right yeah i gotta jump here guys no no problem no problem man. uh dude thank you so much for taking the time we really oh, of course really really appreciate for you, it anything for you brother i'd help you move <laughs> I would like I said when we were in Italy, I'd punch a man in the face for you. Oh, uh, you are you are you are very sweet, man. Thank you very much, and I would I would do I would do the same absolutely. Thank you. you know? Awesome. So, all, all right. right. So